Welcome back everyone to another episode of All About Mechanics and today is going to be Imperial City Prison. We're going to do hard mode on veteran difficulty of course and we're going to use the same setup as we always have done throughout the entire series so far with one stamina DPS, one magic DPS, one tank and one healer so that no rolls are left out. This could be a really lengthy video because there's a lot to go over but hopefully you'll have a better understanding of what to do once this is over. Here we go. Now, Imperial City Prison is actually one of if not the longest dungeon in the game so this is a really really big um, place to kind of take on. There's a lot of bosses, a lot of ad pulls, and you have to be really, really careful. But the same rules apply as to many other dungeons as well. And that's basically get your tank in the middle with the ad pulls and hold on to the big stuff while then trying to control the smaller stuff. Just like White Gold Tower, there are some really big Zivkin types. There's some uh, archers, there's some melee types, and there's some healers. Make sure you focus them as soon as possible. The zombies aren't too problematic, but make sure, of course, that you cluster them up as much as possible as the tank. And, of course, with the bigger targets, make sure that the DPS and healers are not in the face of the enemy. Because that is obviously a negative effect and you will die. So always make sure as a tank you turn stuff away from the group and everybody else stay behind it as much as possible. This particular quest, by the way, you get a shield at the end. It's a, a unique reinforced leeching shield so if you do want to get that make sure that you're at least 160 cp before you take the quest that way it will be your level no matter what if you do the quest earlier than 160 cp you're going to out level it so there's just a little tip for you there now this pull very simple again grab everything into the middle as the tank kind of cluster it all up as much as possible but watch out for this uh, dual wield guy in the middle he's your main focus so make sure that you burn him down as quick as possible while holding him still and turn him away from the group Obviously, he has some nasty spins, so make sure you get out of those if it happens. And if he does channel any effects, make sure you interrupt them. Remember, a key point for the DPS and the healer and the tank is to make sure that if you can see something that can be interrupted, make sure you do so. Otherwise, it's really, really tricky. This pull is pretty straightforward. Same as the last one. Cluster everything up as much as possible, but of course, make sure you turn the big stuff away from the group. The Berserker and the Necromancer need to be dealt with first if possible. Most of the time the ads will die before they do, but make sure you obviously focus these two guys because they are the most dangerous. Now, instead of focusing on the bone colossus that the necromancer spawns, by the way, if you kill the necromancer itself, his pets will die. So always bear that in mind. If you kill a summoner, then the pets will die with him. Don't focus the pets, focus the caster. This boss hits like a truck if you are a DPS or a healer or a tank who's a bit squishy, so be very, very careful. He has a very nasty flurry which actually happens in front of him. It's like a conal effect. If you are in that and you're not a tank and you're not blocking, you are dead. That one there, the really fast paced punches that he does. Be very, very careful. And of course, a little trick here is basically hold him in this position here in front of the portal. You will get adds throughout the fight and they are based on the percentage of health that he currently has. So if you try and overburn him, you'll get too many adds. If you just pace it, like we're doing here, we do our damage, we see an ad, we kill it. We do our damage again, we see an ad, we kill it. It's very, very simple if you manage it that way. Stay out of the big circle AoE because that will stun you or kind of knock you off balance. Be careful there. The adds, you can chain them in as a tank. You can taunt them if you really want to, but they are quite low health. So if they're not causing too much of a problem, you can just let the DPS kind of hold on to them and kill them while you manage the boss. Now, uh, around 50%, he will spawn this Harvester who is evil. Make sure your tank holds on to this and the boss at the same time and be very aware of interrupts. Also be aware that she will put down a nasty area of effect underneath people's feet. If you dodge the first one, of course you'll be fine, but the second one appears very, very fast. So you need to make sure that you avoid both of them. The second one will kill you, so be really careful. Of course, if you're inside of a Nova or something like that, or you have corrosive armor, perhaps if you're a DK, then you'll be just fine. Also, negate bubble works as well, because then they can't cast anything and they get stunned. Apart from that, the rest is pretty much rinse, repeat. Hit the boss, kill the adds, hit the boss, kill the adds. The more you push the boss, the more adds will spawn. So you can pace this very, very slowly if you want. Again, if you've got a load of DPS and you think you can burn it without too much trouble, then of course, be my guest. But if you're new to this, I would highly recommend that you pace your damage on the boss so that you can manage the room much, much easier. Now the next pull, you're gonna see an Atronarch. This is the first one you actually see in here, the Flesh Atronarch. You have to focus these down. If you don't kill it quick enough, it will enrage and start one-shotting people. It's around 50 or 60k a hit. You can sometimes tank it if you're lucky, if you're a really beefy tank, maybe one or two hits, but to be honest, it's pretty much a one-shot. Don't risk it. Kill that Atronarch as soon as possible. As the tank, of course, make sure you grab this target as a priority and turn it away from the group. The adds aren't too bad, the smaller ones. You just do the same as you normally do. Hold them in, 
taunt them up and kill them. They don't really hurt that much, but the Atronarch is a priority. He really, really hurts. The next pull is pretty straightforward. Put everything into the middle. Remember not to stand in front of the nasty stuff. The tank should be able to taunt everything or hold it still while the DPS kind of melted down. It's not too stressful. The next room we do have a Zivkin that we have to deal with, so make sure you prioritize him, of course. In fact, I believe he's on his own, so that's easy to prioritize. Um, he does spin, he does teleport. Make sure that you block if you get caught by a heavy attack, and of course interrupt if he channels any abilities. The next room, however, is a little bit trickier. You have an Atronach again. Remember, you must focus these first, otherwise they enrage and one-shot you. But we do have three Zivkin now. So we've got two Berserkers that can disappear and spin. We've got a Necromancer as well. So you want to focus the Atronach first while doing as much area of effect damage as possible. And then once the Atronach is down, then you start killing the rest of them, of course. But the Atronach, again, I can't stress enough, must be primary. Nine times out of ten, the rest will die before him anyway because of the area of effect damage, but he is... A major, major priority throughout the entire dungeon. Every Atronach must be focused. Now, if you've watched the live streams enough, you'll know that I hate Harvesters, although I love this dungeon. So, here is my Nemesis now coming up. There are seven of these throughout the whole dungeon, so you have to be very, very careful. Again, watch out. Make sure you turn them away from the group if you're the tank. Make sure you interrupt if they start channeling. If you see any AoE underneath your feet, especially a tiny circle-type AoE, you need to move twice. The first one won't kill you, the second one will. It's really, really risky. They hurt like hell, so make sure you focus them no matter what situation you're in. Any ad pulls, regardless of how many ads there are in the room, always focus the harvester. So you got two key targets in this dungeon. No matter what situation you're in, Atronarchs have to die and the harvesters have to die. Otherwise you are in trouble. Now the next pull is another Atronarch. He's got loads and loads of rats around him. They're really not that much of a problem. Tank obviously should prioritize the Atronarch. Grab him, turn him around so the group doesn't get wrecked by him. And then the rest should be dealt with as far as AoE is concerned, quite simply. Focus the Atronarch with your damage and the rats will all die around you. There's really not too much of a problem here as long as they're all pinned. If they're chasing you, don't run around the room because it's going to be really difficult for the tank to get them off you and you're just going to die running away. They will hit you in the back of the face. Don't run away. Stack, burn, kill it, move on. Now we have some watchers coming up. I'm sure you've seen these before in other dungeons, especially stuff like Vaults of Madness. There's actually a boss watcher type. Now, when you first attack these they're kind of immune for a few seconds and they spawn a couple of zivkin around them as well so you have to be very careful of those make sure you interrupt the tank should make sure of course that you taunt the zivkin as well as the watcher um that way the group don't get wrecked by them however obviously you want to focus the watcher as soon as possible so he doesn't stun everyone and all that kind of stuff don't stand in front of his face because you will get stunned now there's two achievements for these they do have a kind of area where they can see you and they also have a blind spot as well the two achievements are, if you kill every single Watcher in the dungeon, you will unlock one of the achievements. If you hide away from every Watcher in the dungeon and none of them ever see you, there's also an achievement. So you're going to come in here a few times to get everything you need to get. One is deliberately killing them, one is deliberately avoiding them. Now this boss is very simple, but it can go horribly wrong if people don't pay attention. If you look around the room, there are loads of uh, small blobs of goo, is the best way to describe it. During the fight when the boss is immune, you want to run around the room and pick these up and throw them in the form of a synergy at the incoming uh, enemies or zombie type targets or whatever you want to call them. That way, if they um, get killed, then they won't reach the pool and they won't spawn Atronarchs, but we're going to see them anyway. At the moment, it's just a case of stack and burn. Tank should hold it still, don't stand in front of his face and make sure you block the heavies. When the Atronarchs come out, you must focus them, otherwise they'll enrage. So hold them still and kill them. Now this is the part where I said about the synergies. These blobs on the ground, you throw them at the inmates, and if you kill them, they won't reach the pool. If you don't kill them and too many reach the pool, every so often you'll have another Atronarch spawn, and this can overwhelm the group, so you have to be very, very careful. Obviously it's a little tricky because they are on the move. Some of them are really, really far away, some are close. You can kind of split up into a corner each if you want, and all have your own area to throw the stuff at the enemies with, or you can, if you have very high damage, you can just ignore them and focus the Atronarchs as and when they come in. Now the inmates only ever come in when the boss is immune and runs back to the pool, so the rest of the time you've just got to focus the boss and the Atronarchs. For the purpose of the video, of course, we showed you initially how to kill the inmates, and now we're showing you what happens when you get overwhelmed. If you get overwhelmed with Atronarchs, yes, you do have to kill them. However, make sure your tank taunts them and holds them still. All you've got to do is block heavy attacks occasionally and keep them on the spot. If you run around the room, this will be a complete nightmare. You have to hold them still, you have to kill them together, you have to make sure that they go down quick enough for them to not enrage. 
So obviously, if you want to drop your ultimates at that point, you can, and you can just, instead of using them on the boss, because he's not that hard anyway, you can just focus your Destro ultis on your other damage ultis, whatever you've got to hand on the Ashenarchs themselves. You can see we're trying to get rid of a few more inmates here so we don't get overwhelmed so much, but we've got an Atronarch and the boss is back, so once he's back, we get back on the Atronarch again and just AoE down the boss with those Atronarchs combined. Now, when the boss becomes immune, obviously you can't hit him, but when he comes out of the immune state, he will run up to a random person and it will come up on the bottom of the screen that someone's being tenderized. Basically, he's banging his axe against their head while they are pinned on the ground. After a couple of seconds, you can interrupt this. If you don't interrupt it fast enough, he will heavy attack them and kill them on the spot. It's a one shot, so you must make sure you interrupt. Again, it is rinse repeat for the rest of the fight. Kill the Atronarchs or throw goo at the inmates. Then when the boss comes back, focus the boss. Rinse repeat all the way through. It's really, really simple. Just make sure that your group does not panic. Again, you've got two choices. You can kill the inmates or you can kill the Atros or you can do a combination of the two. The boss has come back again. Again, remember straight away he will do a heavy attack. Make sure you block it. Then he'll try and tenderize a target. He'll throw poison occasionally, which so you can dodge, but that should be on the tank anyway. And he will do a little cleave, which you basically just need to stay out of. Key points are, again, stay behind the boss if you're a DPS or a healer. As the tank, make sure you hold a taunt and block the heavies. And while he's immune, you can either throw goo at the inmates, or you can kill the Atronarchs, or you can do a combination of the two. As long as the Atronarchs always die, you will be fine. It's only when you start trying to overfocus the boss and you ignore the Atros that you'll be in trouble. Here's a quick zombie pull. They're actually uh, neutral, so as long as you don't have any damage and effects when you go past them, you can ignore them. But we always kill them anyway. You get ultimate, it's quite handy to have that build up for the next fight. Because we are going to go up against a harvester very soon and a few watches and stuff like that. It's a really long run. The dungeon is huge, so there's some large areas of ad pulls before you approach each boss. This room here, very simple, grab everything into the middle, taunt what you can and hold it still. Remember as DPS and healers, try not to stand in front of stuff. If they are hitting you, don't panic, don't run away, let the tank manage the room. Now there is a door at the end, so you do have to press this button before you can go through. I've seen some pickup groups before where people are stuck here and they're not sure what to do. There's the button, make sure you press it, the door will open, job done. Two enemies at the end, really not that stressful. Even if you don't have your tank awake at the moment, this won't be a problem because they won't kill you. It won't hit that hard. But, stay out of that big AoE, it really hurts. Um, as you go down this next ramp, there is a harvester. Now the tank needs to prioritize this straight away. Grab it, taunt it, turn it away from the group. And the group, I would recommend dropping your ultis on it. Because the harvesters, if they stay alive for too long, get really, really strong. They throw out nasty, nasty AoEs underneath your feet. That, like I said earlier, if they double up, they will kill you. So make sure you burn this as quick as possible. You get so much ultimate back with all the Daedra and Undead that you're killing anyway that you can afford to drop ultimates on these guys. Now we have some watches. Remember the two achievements. One achievement for killing them all, one achievement for avoiding them all. So where you see where he's looking is like a green light. That's his cone of vision, so to speak. So if you're inside of that, he will see you. If you're not, he won't. You can sneak around him. Anyway, same as before, he is a little bit immune to start with while he's shouting, and then he brings out loads of Zivkin and Daedra, so make sure your tank is on point pinning these down. Again, focus the big Zivkin if there are any at uh, all times. At the moment, it's just loads of Dramora, so he should be just fine, but make sure you pull them all in. I think we missed one there. I did. I ran off, and there's still one fighting. Remember, again, interrupts. If you see anything casting, anything at all, make sure you interrupt it. Don't just leave it for the tank. Oh, he's got a bash. Yes, of course he has, but so have you. At level 3, everybody's taught how to light attack, heavy attack, block, and interrupt. There's no excuse. If you can see something that needs to be interrupted, make sure you bash it or interrupt it with whatever skill or ability you have that does that. Whether it be crushing shot or a straightforward bash. Now here, of course, there was another watcher. We had to kill that. Very, very straightforward. He spawns enemies. You kill them. Hold him still. Now there's two Atronarchs here, so your tank should prioritize the hell out of those two and turn them away from the group. The Zivkin Berserkers can be a pain in the ass, so just be careful, make sure you interrupt them as and when. But again, I would highly recommend in situations like this with the Harvesters or the Atronarchs, if you can afford to, drop your ultimates. Especially when there's more than one. If you don't kill them fast enough, they will enrage and they will kill you. They'll just run from one target to the next, one shot on you, one after the other. Now, of course, you can actually skip these by running past them, but we're going to show you all the mechanics so we don't necessarily skip anything. We're going to show you all the enemies. 
The next pull is rather large. There's a lot of danger inside here, so make sure your tank goes straight in the middle, taunt that Atronarch, and just pin everything up as much as possible. Again, remember to turn the Atronarch away from the group. Otherwise, he's got a nasty cleave in front of him, and people will start getting hit. Still, same applies. Focus the Atronarch first. No matter how many enemies there are, they will die to area of effect anyway, but you've got to focus that Atronarch. As you can see, most of the time they die before him because he's got a lot, lot more health. You do not want him enraging. Also, if you see anything that needs interrupting, make sure you do so. Especially this Necromancer as well. He's always trying to summon stuff. Just keep him interrupted and it'll be just fine. Now, at this point, since we use our ultimates on the first Atros, we've probably got enough towards the end of this corridor or towards the end of this cavern type area. So save it on the Watcher. Don't burn it on this guy. He's very simple. Just make sure you don't have your back to the... The ditch, by the way, because if you do, when he spins, you're going flying off the edge and it's going to take you a long time to run all the way back. Now, save your ultimates and use them on the next area. The next area's got a harvester and it really, really hurts. Generally, when I'm on stamina, for some stupid reason, the harvester always seems to primary me. So, just a point out there, if you are stamina, get yourself a decent ultimate ready because you're going to need it. Especially if you're a DK, just pop corrosive army, you'll be fine. As you can see up ahead, there are lots and lots of enemies. There's some on the right, there's loads on the left, and there's a harvester smack bang in the middle. So you want your tank to run in and grab that harvester ASAP. Once you've got the harvester, turn it away from the group and start pulling everything in with chains and then pinning it up on the ground. Ultimates at this phase, make sure you interrupt the harvester and burn it down as fast as possible. If you don't have massive DPS, that is fine, but make sure that you're using your ultimates at this point because you're going to need them. If you've got Novas and Protective Ultimates, that is also a really big bonus to your group. Because if you don't have that amount of damage to burn it really, really fast, at least you can survive throughout the damage that's coming in. Again, always stay behind the Harvester if you can help it. If you see her channeling, make sure you interrupt her, otherwise you're pretty much dead. I think the only one that will survive it is the tank. The next corridor, we do have another Watcher, and there's kind of a, a little junction. Where the Watcher is, is where you'll be mostly fighting a couple of zivkin will pop out but off to the right just before we get there there's a tiny little corridor which has a dead end now two enemies will actually spawn in there once the watcher is engaged so just be aware of that you will get attacked from behind so i usually throw down a dot or so in the corridor just to give them a bit of a a bit of a dps if you like while they're coming in but it's entirely up to you i mean as far as this is concerned you can kind of stack everything up in the middle and just watch your back you can drop ultimates here if you really want to, if you've got enough left, but I wouldn't necessarily recommend it because you might want to use it on the boss, which is coming up very, very soon. Tank should hold everything in the middle. Make sure you block any spins or AoEs or anything like that. And watch out for this dude at the back. The Frostcaster really, really hurts the Invoker. His ice light attacks, three or four of them on a DPS is enough to kill you. So be very, very careful. Now, this Watcher boss is massive. Do not touch the water. It's really, really horrible and green and kills you. Simple as that. I can't put it any other way. Don't stand in it. You will get flung into it at certain points in time, but if you do, make sure you get out of it as quick as possible. Pop a heal, dodge roll, and get back in again. Now, this room has five necromancers and then the boss in the middle. The tank should try and position the boss on top of one of the necromancers while the group splits up and kills the necromancers themselves. Now, there's two ways of doing this. You can all have a target each if you want, and once one's down, move on to the next and so on and so forth. Make sure you interrupt them, however, otherwise skeletons will spawn and they really, really hurt. Failing that, what you can do is you can all focus one at a time. So you get your whole group to go on one, kill it, move on to the next, kill it, and so on and so forth. If your tank is capable of doing so, it helps if you can interrupt one or two while you're burning them down. Also, in the fight, of course, you can see that the boss does some really nasty, big, big AoE spins. If that happens and it hits you, you'll be flung out to the side, like I said at the very beginning, make sure that you get out of the water and come back in as soon as possible. Don't stay in it for more than a couple of seconds because you're dead. Also, you'll notice that there's some smaller kind of splashes landed on the ground, which come out from the water and then land where your feet are. Um, you can dodge roll out of this, but that is really expensive on resources. What you really need to do is just block or simply step out of it before it lands, and you'll be just fine. If you block it, it won't do much damage at all, and you won't waste your resources. If you dodge roll, of course, you'll be free, but it will hurt um, because your sustain gets stuffed. Now, this will stun you if you get caught, so just be aware of that. So if you get stunned, make sure you break free. The rest of the time, once the necromancers are dead, it's pretty much a stack and burn fest. Just kill the boss where he is, and you'll be just fine. When you get thrown out of the room, come back in, and when the, the meteor-type splashes land on your head, make sure you block or walk out of it. He will put some nasty stuns in front of him, so this is very obvious, but make sure that you, as the DPS and the healers, don't stand where the tank is. 
Tank needs to turn it away from the group at all times, making sure that you don't get stunned by unnecessary AoEs. The only thing that should really be hitting you is the big spin and the small splashes that land. Everything else shouldn't be a problem. Remember, if you get stunned, break free. If it lands on your head, make sure you block. Now this pull's very simple, just run into the middle, grab everything together, chain it up, pin it, AoE should do the rest. There's no real threat as far as this pull is concerned. Make sure, of course, that the tank goes first. Especially for these nasty pulls coming up, the tank should always be going first. Anyway, if you YOLO in as a DPS and you die, it's your own fault. Let the tank control the room a little bit before you get in, if you can help it. Now, these Horvers really, really hurt. They have very low health, they're only 225k or so. But you see that poison stuff on the ground? You can't block AoEs on the ground. That poison is deadly. If you stand in one circle of it, you'll probably survive, but just be very careful, as long as you've got heals. If you stand in two stacked up, you're dead in about two seconds flat. It's really, really powerful, so do not stand in it. Even as a tank, you sometimes can't withstand that amount of damage, so I would not recommend that anybody stand in that poison stuff. Stay well away from it. Here, you should have enough ultimate already with the last two pulls and the boss, of course, to nuke the harvester. If you don't, just, just be bloody careful. This really hurts. The tank should run in, grab the harvester right away, drop all your ultimates on it and get rid of it as soon as possible. If you can't, then you're going to have to put in some really, really heavy footwork and heals to make sure that you don't die from the nasty AoEs and make sure you interrupt the harvester. They're not very nice at all. As long as you've got plenty of AoE down, most of the other enemies should die while the harvester is being focused. But again, make sure that as a tank, you pull everything in as quickly as you can and turn it away from the group when possible. Primary focus, again, if it wasn't already obvious, is the harvester. Now this next pull is deadly. There are two Horvers. Remember I said don't stand in poison? Well, they stack up when there's more than one. So this is getting really, really risky in this horrible little corner here. So what you really want to do is, of course, make sure your tank goes first. Grab and focus those Horvers ASAP. The first things you want to kill are those Horvers. They've got to die. If you don't kill them, you are in trouble. So get them down really, really quick. Try not to aggro the Harvester from the other side of the room. As you can see, we have got her attention because the tank has gone into the room already. But you can avoid her aggroing you at all to start with. Now we want to save our ultimates for the boss, so here is where you have to focus her very, very carefully. As you can see, there was an AoE that landed under my feet twice then. If I'd have been caught, I'd be dead. So stay behind her, interrupt her as and when. If you see those feasts coming up, you can kill them, otherwise they'll heal her, but generally they don't get to reach her anyway. Stay behind her, interrupt when possible, and if an AoE lands under your feet, get out of the way. This boss, turn it away so it's facing that ditch over there, and hold it still as the tank. Make sure you maintain a taunt. Do not spin it on the group. He's got a really nasty AoE cleave and it will knock everybody on their ass. These Horvers need to be dealt with instantly. So try and avoid as much poison as possible and get rid of the two Horvers. Throughout the fight, you will have more Horvers, of course, but one is manageable, two is a problem. So get rid of them straight away. You can obviously drop your ultimates on the boss, but be very careful. Now there are some phases to pay attention to here. It's really, really important that you watch your feet. Sometimes the Horvers will get AoEs on them and you have to spread out and get away from them. Other times you get your own AoE like this and you have to move away from everybody else. Now as you can see, my own area of effect has turned into something quite nasty. If I stay in the middle, I'm fine. We have to manage the zombies. If I touch the edge of this circle in any way, shape or form, even if I dodge roll, I am dead to a one shot. So do not touch that splurt and circle of poison. It is evil. Even if you think you can get away with it, don't. Let it run its course. So manage the zombies, then get back in on the boss. Now the other mechanic, which um, sometimes happens, sometimes doesn't, is that loads of Horvers will pop up, they all have their own AoE, and they try and kind of try and spread across the room. As you can see now, now if you get out of that, the room will pop, every Horver's dead, and the boss goes back to normal, and you just start again from scratch. If you don't get out of it, you're going to take a one shot and die. So the two major mechanics to pay attention to there, apart from killing obviously the Horvers and the boss and keeping him face away, is if the Horvers get an AoE, get out of it. If you all get your own AoE, make sure you spread out and do not overlap them. Remember, if you are the one inside of the nasty spluttering AoE, stay inside of it and manage the zombies until it is over. Now, we've got kind of a gauntlet situation here where we will be facing several different rooms. In fact, three different rooms full of enemies. This first one is very, very simple. You've got five enemies, just pull them all into the middle, stack and burn, and away you go. Now, obviously, focus the Necromancer since he's the biggest one with the most health. Don't worry about killing his minions. Just kill him and his minions will disappear. Once these are down, you need to open the gate via a little switch on the side and you can move into the next room. Obviously, once the Necromancer is down, get rid of that Berserker because he does hit quite hard, but again, He's not too much of a problem so long as the tank holds him still. 
Remember, like I said before, if you kill the summoners, their minions will die. There's a zombie behind me, and he's not even going to last because this guy is getting focused. Now, the next room is awful. All the things that you've been led to believe are a problem are in this room. You have two Horvers, which you really don't want. You have one Atronarch, and you have one Harvester. Now, the Harvester needs to die, but of course, so do the Horvers. Now, the tank can't hold all of them necessarily at once. It's really, really tricky. So what you need to do is grab the Harvester and grab the Atronarch as quick as possible, and one Horver if you can, and stack them up. The reason being is once this other Horver is on his own, we're not getting double stack ups of poison, so we can manage him ourselves. Then, once he's dead, get in and kill the other Horver and the Harvester and the Atronarch and try and focus them all down as much as possible. It helps if you can get the Harvester down first because that one's the, the nastiest AoE damage and the Atro is only a problem when he enrages, but whichever one you choose is entirely up to you. But this is the phase I would recommend that you use your ultimates on. Just throw everything you've got at this little cluster. Key point to remember, however, one Horver to the group, one Horver to the tank. If they stack up together on the tank, the tank is dead. If they stack up together on the group, the group is dead. So one at a time. Two switches here, both need to be pressed at the same time to open the gate, and now we have our last mini boss. I would highly recommend not using your ultimates on this so you can save them for the last boss, but if you can manage um, with them or without them, it's entirely up to you. Now there's four enemies, kind of stack them up as much as you can as the tank and hold them still. If the berserker spins, you have to block. If the knight charges, you have to block or step out of it. If the healer is healing, make sure you interrupt it. And if the necromancer spawns a crystal on the ground, you must destroy it. Otherwise, you can't do enough damage to the enemy. So what you'll see in a moment is the necromancer runs off and he will put a crystal on the ground. What you need to do is focus it. As you can see, he's only taken 10% damage now. So he's really, really, really strong. You kill the crystal. It takes away that buff that they have and everything goes back to normal. So keep them clustered up as much as possible. Now there is a really important thing to remember for this particular fight. Once any of them die, they come back as a shadow. If they try and hit you with a negative AoE, do not try and block it because you can't. They are a ghost, they will go straight through you, they'll still hit you. So if the knight is dead and he charges you with his shield charge, you can't block it. He will still knock you down, so get out of it. If the berserker, as you can see, is trying to spin at me, I can't block it. So get out of it, just move. They can't be taunted, you just have to watch your feet. Dodge roll or get out of it. Simple as that. Just move your feet a little bit. Apart from that, it's pretty much a stack and burn fest. So long as the tank has control of the main two melee guys, you shouldn't have much of a problem. They don't hit that hard. It's only when they go into ghost form, or if you don't get rid of the crystal, that it becomes a problem. Now we're coming to the last boss. A little tip here, there are two rats in this corridor. If you fire a light attack once, and don't kill it, you'll get three ultimate a second for eight seconds. You let everybody do this, and don't deliberately kill the rats, you can actually use them to build ultimate on. Failing that, just kill them. They are just an annoyance, they're in the way. Now, Lord Warden is tricky. He is a very, very cool boss fight. There are lots of really important mechanics to pay attention to, and some of it is random. So, if you aren't watching your feet, you are going to have a real problem here. You need to coordinate together in order to get hard mode done. You will notice in the fight, and I will show and explain this, that there are up to two portals that will be on the ground. Big white portals, you can't miss them. Each one has two lives. If someone goes in one at the wrong time, that's one life taken. If you go in it again, it will disappear. When the boss goes up in the air and fires a kind of a big meteor at the ground, everyone needs to be in a portal. So what you need to do is try and split yourself up into two groups. Two for one portal, two for the other. Now the boss needs to be taunted at all times, but be careful because he will teleport around. When he disappears and teleports to a particular target, he will heavy attack, so make sure you block. He will also lay down like a large blue ball in the middle of the room, as you can see um, in a moment to my right, which will drain magic and snare you, so be very, very careful. There's the first white portal, and this phase here is what's called the machine gun. Now to avoid this, as you can see, the tank is right in front of me. I'm the target, but the tank is physically blocking my path, so I can't get hit. Also, as you can see, meteors are coming down. You can dodge roll them if you really want to, but the trick is really to just block. You'll save a lot of resources and it will avoid damage, so the safest bet is to block it. Now, when it gets to 65%, he will go into the middle and we will be greeted with four shades. Only one of them can be hit, so mind your feet, don't stand in the portals, don't stand near the blue balls, and make sure you block the meteors. Now, if you kill one, obviously you move on to the next and so on and so forth until they're all dead and he will respawn. But if you don't get him to 65%, 
already he would have flown up into the air and would have to deal with the meteor which I will show you in a moment. Now the trick to managing these shades because they do hit really 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 hard is that the tank should kind of stand fairly central and taunt all four of them. Once they're taunted they will only hit the tank and if you spam absorb magicka you will actually absorb the incoming bolt and you basically can't die because you'll heal off of it. Just be really careful they have a massive hitbox so you can taunt them from a very very long way away. Remember I said two people per portal, the whole time we're doing this we're keeping an eye on our assigned portals. I'm with the tank for one and the healer and the DPS are with the other one. So keep your eyes peeled all the time, don't touch it but just look for it. Now we've got a machine gun phase coming up, um, it is random, it doesn't happen all the time. Now again, line up behind the tank, nobody will get hit as long as the tank is blocking those machine gun bolts. If you run around the room, you're dead. Now watch him carefully, he's going to go up into the air and he's on the other side of the room. This is when he's going to fire his meteor and this is where two and two need to go in one portal and the other. Once you get in, you must take this synergy to protect you while you brace and kind of hit the ground. And as soon as you do hit the ground, yes of course you're going to be with the boss and the blue balls and all that good stuff. So you must make sure you put on a shield or a heal as you land and get out of the way. Now it starts again from scratch. The boss fights as normal, he's got a machine gun, he's got one portal up and meteors are coming down so just be careful, stay behind the tank while he's blocking, don't touch the portal. When two portals are up he's going to attempt to go upstairs again or up in the air and at 35% he'll get more shades. Now because of the damage we didn't actually get to have him go up again which is a safe way to do things if you can manage it and we've got four shades. Again you can see the tank is dead center in the room taunting all four and just absorbing the damage as it comes in while we kill the shades that are active. Remember they have a huge hitbox. If you want to you can even use these to build up resources just by heavy attacking or just build up ultimate for the final phase if you want to. There's no uh, real stress as far as this is concerned as long as people don't die because if you do then it becomes really difficult because while you're resin meteors will land on your head and try and stun you. Remember, block the meteors. The longer this goes on, however, the faster the meteors get, so be careful. Also, the longer the fight, the more blue balls the boss will spawn and the room can get a little bit overwhelmed, so just be very careful with that as well. It's not a DPS race as such, but you do have to make sure that you're paying attention, you don't die too often, and you really pay attention as to which portal you've assigned yourselves to. I mean, you can follow it around, you can switch portals, whatever, but if any of them lose a life, be honest, tell the group that you went in by accident, and then you can actually go back in again and get rid of it so that it has to spawn a second one. Now, machine gun again, it is on someone behind the tank, and as you can see, the tank is physically blocking them. You have to be very, very careful. If you dance around while the machine gun is aiming at you, it will not miss, it will hit you, and it will kill you. Hide behind the tank. This is the final phase, basically, where we just execute it. Um, if he had gone up into the air again, which he can, Remember which portal's yours, get in it, take the synergy, heal, get out the way. Very, very simple. It can go very, very wrong, however, so just practice it and you'll do just fine. Remember, however, if you don't get in the portal, he will meteor the room and you will die to a one-shot, so you have to be very, very careful of your feet. Okay, so hopefully that helped, hopefully that wasn't too boring, and hopefully you now have a better understanding of how to approach the mechanics of that particular dungeon. It is really, really tough. It does take a lot of practice, especially hard mode. There's a lot going on, so just take it chunk by chunk and try and absorb the information at your own pace. Be very, very careful of your feet, and don't panic. Anyway, first of all, thank you all very much for watching. I hugely appreciate the support, and if you are not subscribing, please do hit that button. It is free. Furthermore, if you would like to support the channel outside of YouTube, there are links in the description for Patreon, Twitter, Facebook, and of course the website zynodgaming.com where all the written guides are. And of course there's a link to Twitch where I live stream every single night from 10pm UK time onwards. There are going to be more dungeon guides coming for the All About Mechanics series, and the next one that you should be looking forward to is Ruins of Mazatun, which is really, really hard. Anyway, once again, thank you all very, very much for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.